I'm watching. All right, do you live in this territory? I live in Hebron. In Hebron? So you're coming over and checking this all out then? Well, good. I drive it, so it's just... I've been driving it for 20 years. I know. <laughs> it's best to know what's going to happen. Yeah, in 20 years from now. That's right. It'll, it'll take that long. That's why I'm here filming it. Oh, okay. So I'll be putting all this on YouTube okay, and okay. Facebook to help educate people. Will be on yeah. website. So that will give you a good I'll be filming each one of them. Oh, great. I'll be taking pictures of each one of them okay. and hopefully getting some explanations about each one. So if you find out some good information, come up and give it to me. Hello. Tell you a little story here. I don't know if you got all of this or not because I don't know if my camera was running or not. I don't think it was, but anyway, this is the school here, Lenneman, AJ Lenneman, that my sister taught in, Barbara Brander, fourth grade, I believe. I always said a prayer and read a scripture to all of her students and uh, taught here for almost her entire career, other than a piece of time at at Beechwood, she taught, and at San Henry. And then she came to uh, the Erlanger Ellesmere system, and I was here in 1970, and became president of the Education Association, and Barbara taught here. I taught advanced government and American history, and uh, worked with the uh, many uh, elected officials with the city of Erlanger, Great Mayor uh, Austin Mann and Jim Ellis and Orville Sorrell and some great people and worked with the city council people and the current mayor. Worked with her on several things. Uh, Miss Fett, and she's also the owner of the uh, beautiful uh, restaurant. Right, you come down the street here and you see the uh, hive and uh, it's where they had a lot of the functions there for Daniel Cameron, who I've been supporting for governor. And, uh, but anyway, Barbara taught here for her whole, almost her entire career before she went on to heaven and spent many years here. And Jay, her husband, was a World War II vet and uh, was on the USS Swanee. That was uh, hit by two kamikazes. He lost his best friend, Johnny Bianco, on that and the Battle of Lake Tegal. And uh, he died several years after Barbara. And uh, I loved taking him rides all through northern Kentucky. And he loved it. And him and Barbara were travelers. And Barbara was more of a traveler than, than actually Jay was. She traveled all over the place with the ladies' trips. And she just loved to travel and learn. And she was a wonderful, wonderful fourth grade school teacher. Like I said, reading their Bible and every morning and saying a prayer with their students. And uh, the, uh, she was, Judy Lynn did the same thing. My little sister, she uh, taught in four different states, and uh, including Kentucky, and graduated from Cumberland. Barbara graduated from Eastern. I graduated from the University of Kentucky, 1970. Taught the first black history course in the state of Kentucky in a public school in 1969 in Jessamine County. And then taught the same unit here in Erlanger Lloyd in history, advanced government and history.
great school system, great people, some great teachers. And, uh, and Mr. Henser, Harold Henser, and you had uh, some wonderful, his wife, Mr. Perry, and uh, Miss Wolf, and Mr. Pettibone, and Mr. Fugit. Mr. Bruns is a coach. I was the head track coach back in 1970. And just love the people here in Erlanger and Ellesmere. My two daughters graduated from Erlanger, Holly Smith and Pamela Smith. And uh, my other daughter, Colleen Michelle, graduated from Boone County. And my son, Guy Stevenson, graduated from uh, Connor. And uh, you might notice that uh, they just, uh, just did the, uh, oh, it's called the garden seven mile garden. It was a seven mile house when I owned it and I donated the land I had left after the highway department bought a lane, a turning lane there. I had some land left so I donated it to the city of Erlanger and they eventually built the beautiful garden that's there now it's called the seven mile garden. They had a beautiful program uh, with it with the mayor cutting the ribbon and all the workers there and, and I was glad to play a Row and donating the land and, and sitting across the street and singing my old Kentucky home. But they had some young folks there that did a better job than me singing my old Kentucky home. Always best to get this. Hi there, how y'all doing? God bless you. Good to see you. Nice to be here too. Keep up the good work, sir. Thank you very much. God bless you. What's your name? My name's Greg Schmitz. I go all the way back when you ran for railroad commission. Oh, that's right. And I helped, and I helped you. Absolutely. You you're like me. You have such a genuine interest in what we do. I, so I God do. God bless you and, your, and all your help. Because I know a lot of people are dedicated. Well, God bless you. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, that sort of sums it up, doesn't it, folks? <laughs> and my sister, Mary Ruth, who is the greeter for Walmart down in Carrollton, Kentucky, 86 years old. Still singing and jumping up and down, praising the Lord and, and the Robinson family singers and my nephew Mark and his kids all play instruments. They all play instruments. They're like mom and dad and myself. I've been singing today to all the people over at St. Elizabeth Hospital in Fort Thomas, getting my uh, CAT scan done on my sinuses and getting blood work done on my kidneys. They got me on these water pills, Dr. Yasho Ishola, and my heart doctor. and. So I'm running back and forth to the restroom about every hour and a half. <laughs> and uh, but the good Lord willing in the creek don't rise at, at 80 years old, maybe I can hang in there a little longer and still do some good with travels with Dr. John Stevenson and June Guyman Stevenson. Smartest move I ever made from Campbell County and bless her heart, she's uh, battling some leg things but doing well and hanging in there. And uh, she's uh, had to have some surgery, and so we're watching that and trying to keep an eye on it. It's a good crowd here. I'm telling you, a lot of people here. I can't wait until we can get somebody to go around and take pictures of all the slides. And we can ex we can tell you about all the things that are going on here that tie us into what's going on with building the new bridge. If you remember back, I had a show on that for two days. I went down and filmed from the Radisson Hotel up on the 18th floor, their restaurant up there, and the revolving restaurant. These wonderful people let me come up there and film. And uh, I filmed uh, the uh, whole uh, road tundra riding around all the greater Cincinnati, northern Kentucky skyline for two days. My son Guy went up there and helped me quite a bit. And that was great to have him. He's retired from the State Department now of Kentucky. He was the head of the Revenue Cabinet in Northern Kentucky for many years. Just retired here about a, about a year ago, I guess. So, but he's still working for a great uh, tax examiner. So he he's uh, he's still doing his thing, doing it very well. Guy Stevenson. You can see the crowd here. I'll tell you. Really great. Really great. 
Well, they'll be coming back over here to me. I've got some folks lined up. They're going to help take my camera around and talk about each one of the slides. And so maybe we'll learn something. You can pick up something that will have interest to you as a passenger or a driver on the highways with I-75 and 275 because several changes will be made. They're already being affected, a lot of them out there with work being done. I filmed some of them coming over here tonight. So. Now you can see those films that I did of the Northern Kentucky area uh, that be, will be affected as I filmed uh, all of the slides that they had there and uh, talked with some of the people, interviewed several people about the new bridge and showed some footage and background on the original bridge that's standing there now when my old friend Bert T. Combs, who was former governor, came up here. Well, there's a wonderful lady. Come here just a second. I, uh, I'm doing great, but I miss you so much. I know. I just came from church. Did I you? just came from down there cooking Wednesday night dinner. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Well, bless yeah. your heart. So. Now tell us who you are so people know. I'm Patsy Erickson. And he, she is a wonderful cook, a wonderful human being. For years, she took care of us men at the men's sure, prayer breakfast. I, I sure did. I was one of the first ones to go in 1974, I oh, believe it was. I went there in 19. I've been there. I've been there for 26 years. Oh, it's amazing! Uh -huh. It's amazing. Do you see anything of Matt at all in, lately, or? No. I just I wonder know. how he's doing. I don't know. I don't I think they're going to be able to rebuild there. No, are they? they just tore it all down. They've been oh, up there. I did not know yes, that. Yes, they just took it down. Maybe today's Wednesday. I think Monday they took it down. Now, yeah. what we're talking about is the old uh, Colonial Cottage. Colonial Cottage, and but it, they had a fire there and some just destroyed their electrical equipment and everything. Right. And it was going to cost too much to rebuild right. it. So right. they tore it down, and I didn't know that they had done that yet. But this lovely lady worked there for many years, too. Right. Ten years. Ten years. And uh, Matt, bless his heart, I know his heart was broken oh, by I'm not sure. being. Oh, sure, yes. Because yes. he loved the place. Right, right. He really did. Like me, when I loved the Seven Mile House, now we don't have the Seven Mile House, but they made it into the Seven Mile Garden right up the street there. Oh, yeah? I used to own that there back years ago when I rehabbed that whole thing and made it into a little pipe and tobacco shop. Oh, that's yeah. cool. <laughs> then back then it was called the Seven Mile House, but then it, uh, we, the highway department bought it and built a lane in there, and I donated what I had left in the land, and they made a park there and did a beautiful job. Oh. Or City of Erlanger did. Yes, yes. Beautiful job. Oh, it's good seeing you. God bless you. How's she? She's hanging in there. Good. Got some health problems, but hanging in there. All right. Well, you take care of yourself. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, nice to see you. You too. Hi, folks. Nice to be here with you. Boy, that's what a wonderful Christian lady. Wonderful lady she is, I tell you. Great cook and just a great person, a human being. For years and went to the men's prayer breakfast. I want to encourage you all to go to the men's prayer breakfast out there. I can't go anymore because it would mean June would have to get me up and it takes us almost two hours to get up and get me dressed and ready to be able to go anywhere with my handicaps. I have very little feeling left in my feet and uh, just lots of other problems. <laughs> you don't need to know about all of them but anyway I got my problems and so uh, I can't get up and make it to the prayer breakfast, but I make it to a lot of other things with the Lord's help. But the men are still over there, and I get over there once in a while. Miss June will make an effort to get me out and get over there, because the prayer breakfast starts at 6.30, and now it's not at Fort Mitchell Baptist anymore. It's over at Lakeside Christian, right there on Buttermilk. And you just drive around and park, men. 6.30, be there sharp, out 7.30, get the best breakfast you ever laid your eyes on. 
trust me, and some great men, and they pray for you. And you, we all need prayers, and the country needs prayers. And it's ecumenical, so whether you're Catholic, Baptist, Protestant, or whatever you are, just remember, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for Jesus? He knocks on everybody's door. Knock, knock, knock. But you got to reach down, turn the knob, and invite him into your heart. What we'll do down there with Randy Wallace and myself on Friday night. Every fourth Friday, we go to the homeless shelter down there called Fairhaven in Covington. Randy and I will be down there this uh, Friday night, oh, about a quarter till seven. And we'll be singing to the men and talking to the men and uh, just having a great time with the men there and encouraging them. Give a lift to your fellow man. Read Mom's poem on uh, service to humanity and your fellow man. Give a lift to your fellow man. Mom, Garnet Bingham Stevenson. My dad, Alton Charles Stevenson. Mom died at the age of about 54. And uh, that was the same year, 1965, they got the little Kenton Baptist Church built and uh, out in Kenton Station, Kentucky. Dead and one of the deacons had turned the shovel over. Mom gone on to heaven. I never will forget what she told me. I said, Mom, why do you think Dad, God had to take uh, you home instead of dead? She said, son, she said, in order for your dad to be saved, the Lord has to take me on home. You need to take care of your dad, and I tried to do the best of that. He lived to be 96, I believe it was, or no, 86, lived to be 86, and died in the arms of a Baptist minister down in Grant County after having his breakfast, driving out, and and uh, and uh, 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 died in the arms of a Baptist minister down there at 86. And so he got to see me sworn in, though, as uh, superintendent of education by Eugene Seiler with Brereton Jones and David uh, and Judge uh, uh, from down in eastern Kentucky, Paul Patton, and uh, oh, some other great folks, uh, Bob Babbage on there, and, and uh, Mr. Gorman. Oh, I was a, that was our team that I, I got a chance to sing my old Kentucky home every stop we made in Kentucky. I loved doing it when I ran for superintendent of education for Kentucky. But we're here tonight at A.J. Lineman having a good time. We're waiting for someone to come over and give us a lift to take the camera around and and, and do the, the work of uh, telling us about each of the slides and what's happening. In the meantime, I hope I've given you a little background uh, to kept your attention and uh, here and told you a little story about my sister Barbara Jean. Of course, my brother Gerald was a veteran too. He was a master sergeant in Hokkaido, Japan in the Army and taught uh, the Army personnel in the Korean conflict how to ski. He was a ski instructor. And he was also a great musician and a great singer and guitar player, as Randy Wallace can tell you. He went to that church out there and uh, did a beautiful job. Nice to see you. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. People see me on the television. <laughs> Change introduced to the U.S. in the early 2000s. The DDI is also known as a double crossover diamond. DDIs feature an unusual but easy to navigate design that greatly improves traffic flow. The primary difference between a DDI and a conventional diameter change is the DDI eliminates the need for left turning vehicles to cross the paths of through vehicles traveling in the opposite direction. The concept uses clearly defined curves, signs, pavement markings, and state of the art signals to move drivers briefly over to the left or opposite side of the bridge above the highway. This travel pattern eliminates drivers turning left in front of oncoming traffic, which reduces congestion and significantly increases travel safety. The DDI design is shown to improve the operations of turning movements to and from freeways. This significantly reduces the number of vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle conflict points compared to a conventional diamond interchange. The DDI also reduces the severity of conflicts as left turning movements and opposing through movements are eliminated. 
type of highway interchange. Introdu right here, right now. Come here and tell me now you can't do it. Okay. And then um, it says, uh, can Candace and Carson go to the virtual open house? And I'm going to change this tomorrow so that this is much more prominent. Um, but you, oops, I didn't need to do that. When you do that, you'll get takers of this. Okay. So, and this site, if you look around, this is all the same information that is at. Well, let's go slow and just run through there then. I'm sorry. Just go slow and run through there. Is there any work verbiage with it? With the, with the yeah, it, it's all in here. So these are the tabs. Um, so well, this, this is a main introduction, and this first page tells you how it all works. Well, see, what I try to do is take it a page at a time mm -hmm. and print it, and people can print that off if they want uh -huh. to, or they can enlarge it and read it. Perfect. You know. And I, I can give you the web address so they can go to this directly because this is an interactive page. A lot of people will do that, but most most won't, yeah. to be honest with you. They won't, um, but they can if they choose to do so. Right. And we've got some questions here. Um, and uh, these are uh, tell you how um, people have already answered. And then when you're ready to go, you can hit continue. And then that takes you to tell you about the process page. And then there's a discussion about what what's involved in the different processes. Um, this is the phase that was already completed, the first one. And so the, this is a narration of what all the folks are seeing um, tonight. I know you can. Here's a question, and to answer it, you can just select an option. And then this part is telling us about what phase we are in right now. And then each of these tabs up here, they, they're focused on different parts of the interchange. So you've got the south, central, north, west, and this is your little control bar. So you can click on it and move it. You tab east, environmental information, and then information about next steps. Um, but we're on the south screen right now, and so this gives you a quick overview of what they're talking about the improvements are on the south interchange. And then this map, you can see all the little different points of improvements. Um, it's hard to read, so you just click on it. Hang on a second here. And it uh, blows it up for you. Hang on just a second. Let me get up. If I can get a little closer here. Turfway. Turfway and Thoroughbred Boulevard Interchange. Excuse me. I 7175 Interchange with Turfway and Thoroughbred. Okay. And again, it summarizes some of the main points of what the improvements are. And this graphic gives you a, a visual. I'm going to click on it to enlarge it, okay? Did that enlarge it? Yeah. Okay, hang on a second. It's not that much bigger, but if anybody looks it up, this one online, you can zoom in. Right, that's a nice feature. Sorry, I'm just trying to get it so it's a no, lot of okay. picture for you. Picture of this. Okay. And then you scroll down here, here's some of the more of the questions. 
And what's neat about this program is it does show you um, kind of what people are thinking right now. Okay. Um, and then down here you have, um, a, like if you were to enter in a response here where it says, um, tell us why, uh, the comments do pop up. And you can also select, say, yeah, I want to do a comment, but I don't want anybody to see it. You can switch this toggle yeah. and it takes it off. And then this section talks about DCD, and DCD is a um, double crossover diamond interchange, and this is what they just installed over at Mount Zion um, and at Graves Road. Um, so they're looking at putting one of these in at the I-75 and KY-236 interchange. Okay. So um, this area here tells you a little bit about what a D DCD is, but um, this is a link to YouTube. Um, this is what the Ohio Department of Transportation did, and um, it's a very good, or they did the video, it's a very good one, but they call it a DDI. So <laughs> little, um, it, it's called How long is differently. It? You've already filmed it. Oh, good. Yeah, it's the same. Oh, yeah, I got that one. I uh -huh. remember. Yeah, and and okay. so that's how you get to that. And then this just tells you a little bit more detail about how a DCD works. Okay. And again, do you want me to pull that up? If you don't mind. Not at all. Okay. A couple questions that you can answer. It's open house style. There was no presentation. So. Okay. And then this section down here um, talks about some of the considerations regarding the improvements that they were discussing on south of the interchange. Um, this may cause potential relocations. I, I can enlarge this as well. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. The, the south tab is the longest of all the tabs. What's it called? It's the south tab. Okay. And then uh, when I call it the south tab, it's the these tabs that are labeled up here at the top. So south, central, north, west. So now we're moving into the central 75 interchange. Okay. the improvements that have been proposed. I want to make sure you get the legend down there. Okay. Um, just a little feature on this map, just yeah. so you know. Um, oh, nice. we, we've got the little highlights of what's happening at each one, but then um, these little boxes show you the lane configurations. Okay. And I believe the red arrow. There we go. Yeah. I'm sorry, the red arrows are talking about new lanes to be added. But if you zoom up on any of the maps, you, you can see that in more detail. Okay. Oops, sorry. Ready for me to get out? Yep. Okay. Um, and then this section talks about the highlights of um, the improvements in that in the central area. Okay. Okay. And then um, again, we get into uh, considerations regarding the proposed improvements. Okay, you're going to enlarge that. This one talks about um, proposed uh, noise walls and relocations. Okay. Okay. 
anybody who looks at this um, has a property that's been identified as a um, potential relocation, there's information, they can click on this link. It'll give them an information booklet. This here is if it's, uh, they have a piece of property that's affected. Yeah. This will let them go to find out what, what to do and how to do it, find out how it's affected, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, environmental impacts. A couple questions. And these are all collecting information about what people think about the proposed improvements. If I'm going too slowly, let me know. Okay, go ahead. And open comment. And that's the end of the central. Okay. So now we move on to the north section. Look on the map for you. Well, the main thing that I try to do with what I'm doing is, is instead of running people away, entice them enough that they'll actually get interested and try to find out to get more information mm -hmm. and know that it's out there if they want to they want to look for it, you know. Well, I worked hard on this site, so I hope it, people find it very informative. Okay. These are noise walls? Mm -hmm. right. Possible noise walls. Okay. I keep losing my mouse. <laughs> I guess the main thing is to alert them that they can make yeah, they comments. Can. Yeah. <coughs> okay, and so continuing now we're on the west arm of the interchange. This is um, going towards the airport, um, towards Mineola Pike. Now this is uh, the 75 to 275 interchange recommended alternative? The, this is part of the recommended alternative, yeah. The, the recommended alternative has many elements on different parts of the interchange. Okay. So this is the west arm of that. Okay. Okay. And again, this is another double crossover diamond interchange that's being proposed for 275 in Minneola Pike. 
275 in Mineola Pike. I'm going to adjust real quick. Sitting backwards. <laughs> What we were trying to tell people tonight is that um, we have an abbreviated comment form here tonight, but if they want to provide more detail, this is an easy way to do it. And this is east of the interchange. Video's running right now, see? Mm -hmm. 4129. Just go to start the first one. Take at least a couple of singles. That that don't shut the video off. Just hit that, take pictures of each one okay. a couple of times. So okay. I know you got a clear shot. Do you okay. mind doing that? Nope. And if you want to say something about it, you can say it if you don't you... want me on video. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well I didn't know if they had a title or something, you know. <laughs> I'm part of the communications team. <laughs> so. um, okay. Now, what if there are people standing in front of them? Uh, if you can't move them out of the way for a picture, just come back to it. Okay. So it, it's videotaping now? Yeah. Okay. Video's taping now. Okay. And it's that one, right? The little, only the little camera.
In there, yeah. but I, I got it in the order so you can see where it was. Well, as you can see, the, a lot of the folks have left here, and uh, with some knowledge tonight, we hope, and uh, gained, garnered some knowledge about how was, and what was going to be done, and how it's going to affect their, their lives. And uh, so I'll be heading on home here shortly. Travels with Dr. John Stevenson. 859-750-0000. Join us on Facebook or YouTube. Don't forget, we read about us on www.begottenson.com, www.godspeaks.biz, or www.jstevenson.com. And uh, join us on YouTube under Travels with Dr. John Stevenson and June Guyman Stevenson. God bless you. And Nice to be here with you this evening. A little tribute to all of the uh, transportation cabinet workers, the uh, employees, state employees, and the uh, professional employees, salaried employees that work with the transportation cabinet of Kentucky. As former superintendent of education for the state of Kentucky and former deputy secretary of transportation under Dr. Floyd Poor and uh, Martha Lane Collins and former commissioner of motor vehicles under Dr. Poor and Martha Lane Collins governor. I sing you this little song taught to me by Happy Chandler to thank you for all the work that you do and to help the citizens of Kentucky. 
and it goes like this. The sun shines bright on my old Kentucky home. Tis summer, the children at play. The corn tops ripe and the meadows are in bloom. And the birds make music all the day. Weep no more. My ladies, oh, weep no more today. We will sing one song for my old Kentucky home, for my old Kentucky home far away. Now, don't forget, folks, to listen to 107.5 FM on your radio dial. Tri-State Gospel. Falmouth, Kentucky. Post Office Box 50. Zip code 41040. Gil and Jan Hammond. Tri-State Gospel. Listen to that great music and those great sermons. And remember, are you ready? Are you ready? Jesus is knocking on your door. Are you ready? Reach down, turn the knob, and invite him into your heart. And remember what Billy Graham taught me back in 1956. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict. It's God's job to judge. It's my job to love. And don't forget, Oh, the children who on the little cabin floor All merry, all are happy and bright by and by hard times comes a knocking at the door then my old kentucky home says good night weep no more my ladies oh weep no more today we will sing one song for my old kentucky home for my old Kentucky home far away. For my old Kentucky home far away. And don't forget, folks, one KY, one NKY. Got that down now? One in KY, Northern Kentucky. Home of the Ark and Answers in Genesis. The Golden Triangle of Kentucky. My old Kentucky home. God bless you and have a great day. Travels with Dr. John Stevenson, former superintendent of education, Commonwealth of Kentucky. Hope you have a great day and enjoyed the time. And I hope you learned something from all the videos tonight and the tapes and the stills. And if you need to answer some questions, call them over there at the highway district office and look it up on the computer. You can see it there or you can get some answers from them. They'll be there to help. That's their job. God bless you and have a great day. John and June Guyman Stevenson. YouTube, Facebook, 859 750 Oh, 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 oh. Join us on YouTube and Facebook.
Travels with Dr. John Stevenson and June Gaiman Stevenson, YouTube and Facebook. Former Superintendent of Education, Commonwealth of Kentucky. Former Deputy Secretary of Transportation and Commissioner of Motor Vehicles for Kentucky.